Hey friends, it's Melvin. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Here's just a few quick things I wanted to notify you guys about before we get started. First up, very soon, new episodes will be releasing Wednesday mornings rather than Tuesday. So don't panic if you don't see a new episode on Tuesday. Just wait a little longer and you'll see it in your feed. Second, we've introduced a mailbag. Check those show notes and toward the bottom you'll see a mailbag link. You'll then be able to text us any questions you might have about movies, the movie industry, or any movie slash Christian related questions you might have. Then we'll respond in a future episode, so send us your questions now. Up next, Patreon polls, which are available to Patreon supporters at the $3 tier or higher, have been updated. Supporters can now suggest films or shows to be reviewed at the end of each month. The two most liked submissions will become the options for the Patreon poll, so if you want to hear us talk about your favorite movie or show, join our Patreon and start campaigning. And lastly, whether you're a new or long-time listener, please consider writing a review or rating the Cinematic Doctrine podcast on iTunes and Spotify. Apart from financially supporting on Patreon, these are the two most helpful ways to support the show. And that's it. Enjoy the episode. You're listening to Cinematic Doctrine. All right, so if you just press play, you are missing out on 30 minutes of content. Uh, It is some extra, extra, extra Haunted Mansion stuff because this is a Haunted Mansion October at this point. Um, First off, I have a guest, my sister Shirley on. Hi, Cheryl. What's up? Uh, And the two of us, we discussed a lot of Haunted Mansion like lore and backstory regarding how it was developed. We talked a bit more about the 2003 Haunted Mansion movie, which my sister rewatched in prep for also us talking about the 2023 one. So you get to hear a bit of their thoughts, get some third person thoughts on this film. And I just want to say I have a lot of opinions about it, according to my brother. I was just going to say, there's so (laughs) you need to do $3 a month for Patreon so you can hear all of my opinions. Otherwise, you're only going to get the opinions for 2023. Yeah, you need the other one. It's going to help. You need the other. So please. (laughs) It is the 0.5 addition episode to the previous haunted mansion episode so um yeah like like cheryl said uh three dollars a month you gain access to a lot of patreon uncut content that's not just on this episode it's on basically every episode for the last two years so that's 30 minutes to 40 minutes to 50 minutes sometimes we go too long and it's an hour (laughs) it really is worth it so three dollars a month you get a bunch of extra stuff there's other perks of supporting the podcast you'll hear about those throughout the episode as we're talking about not the Haunted Mansion, but Haunted Mansion, which is also not Muppets Haunted Mansion. Stay which tuned is... <laughs> for that one. <laughs> yeah, I am definitely interested, actually. Now, at this point, I feel like we have to. Um, yeah, so we are going to do, uh, let me just do a quick format update to those who are listening. We're doing a party pleaser episode. So one of the two of us, me, is going to summarize the whole movie from start to finish. So if you haven't watched Haunted Mansion... We are going to explain it to you, and you'll be able to keep up just fine. If it was something you're interested in watching, it's on Disney+. Plus. I'm pretty sure it'll stay there forever until Disney decides they want to take it off, just like Zazzalop does with everything on the HBO Max. Or, I'm sorry, he took off the HBO part. He calls it Max, and Disney yep. started to do the same with their content. Um, but you can still watch it there. Um, so I guess I'll just get started then. We'll get into the beginning of it. We'll have, as I'm summarizing it, I forgot to mention, we will be sharing thoughts, responses to particular scenes. I have notes independently. My sister said that she also mm-hmm. took a lot of notes too. Yes, so it's going to be good stuff. So let me let me go ahead and get started. Um, so the opening scene is Madame Leota, um, a, a mysterious voice. But if you know Jamie Lee Curtis's <laughs> Madame Leota, you know that it's them. Um, and so Jamie Lee Curtis's voices, uh, voice says foolish mortals and begins to build up the story of what this is. She alludes to the setting, which is New Orleans. I love, I just want to say I love New Orleans and I love that they like, good actually setting. made it the setting. I want to go so bad. I'll probably be like totally disappointed when I finally do go, but the jazz, the music, the party feel, not that I'm a partier, but like, it just seems so jovial and fun. And I just. I want to go so bad. So yeah, like some movie, of my favorite shows took place fun. there. And yeah. like, I just want to know, is it really like this? Anyway, so we know we're set in New Orleans, which is very different than um, the previous film, which I feel like was set in 2003, was set in like the Bayou. Which is <laughs> like, kinda... like new is probably like they probably it was probably New Orleans, but like they didn't say they didn't the Bayou say. is yeah. in Louisiana. Like that is kind of that's where you'll find it. Find it. But mm-hmm. 
they didn't really say it. Basically, uh, Madame Leota tells us their setting. It's New Orleans. She has some platitudes about new beginnings, starting over. So we're getting her themes right out the way. Cut to Lakeith Stanfield at a party bar. Um, it's new. It's the new year. His name is Ben. His character's name is Ben. Uh, he's talking to a woman who gives uh, ghost tours. Her name is Alyssa. And then we cut to, again, an unknown amount of time has happened. Uh, ben is hung over at a bar. And he now runs the ghost tours. Uh, so we're not really sure what happened to Alyssa. Mm, because he's not it's doing it not a ghost tour. It's a history tour. And he will yell at you, uh, Miss Carol, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you get it wrong. <laughs> I remember. Have you been on a ghost tour before? I have not. So I've been on a ghost tour. And I remember going on that. Uh, if uh, keen listeners of the podcast will know, this was the same time I went to the beach uh, at uh, when I tried to speak to ghosts during the paranormal when I in the paranormal episode, I alluded to the okay. fact that I was trying to be like paranormal and talk to ghosts because I was so lonely and didn't know what to do because my parents were at the beach and I didn't want to go, but I had to go. So I was hanging on the beach house by myself. <laughs> and that same trip, I also did a ghost tour. And on that ghost tour, while I was walking through the ghost tour with the person who is now leading the leading the tour and they have a lantern, we're just walking through the beach and walking through the town. But everybody in town obviously knew it was a ghost tour. So people on bikes, cars driving by would honk. People on bikes would be like, ooh, and like would just constantly make fun of the ghost tour. (laughs) It was so funny. And I kept thinking to myself, like, this is embarrassing. I can't believe I'm doing this. I can't believe I'm at this point in my life where I'm oh this alone. Goodness. And I just Aww. feel like, oh my God. It's, I, I think it's very funny to reflect on now, but yes. it's just like, it's so funny to me that, what was it, a year or two ago, we talked about Paranorman and now we're Here coming we back are. to that same exact trip for the basically right? the same story. Exactly. We are less than five minutes into this two hour <laughs> movie. We got to keep going. We barely got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. He's on this history History tour, get it right. He's on this history, history ghost, not not ghost tour. Um, <laughs> while there's these transitions and he's leading it, and we learn that he doesn't believe in ghosts or anything at all. Um, we also keep getting this alluded to visual of a U-Haul truck with a ghost on the side, um, because of course it does. I'm going to read my headers for whenever I have a new section. So my header here is moving in. I have a note that I wrote, and I think we'll talk further about this, and hopefully we don't beat this to death. <laughs> har har. But my note is just, it just says just so digital, so fake looking, Hmm. literally everything. We are, by this point in the film, there really hasn't been much that's happened. But um, the moving in scene, we see a car pull up to essentially what's going to be the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. But then all the visuals surrounding the car, the shadowing, the trees, the Haunted Mansion itself just looks super plasticky and fake and i just i was like immediately yeah. repulsed by the visual effects huh. and profile of the film i don't know if that ever set in for you it probably didn't I, but i don't it did, think it did and it was so two reasons one usually i don't notice those things those are the things i don't usually notice um unless it's glaringly obvious like some things glaringly yeah, like the obvious flash. um the, which i did not watch but yes uh i was gonna bring up the mummy because i've seen that and the rock the- New one? Oh, ooh. <laughs> that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is noticeable. <laughs> Laughable yes. and noticeable. That's traumatic. That I notice. I'm not an idiot. That one's the bad. The second reason is I, I adjusted the brightness on my TV because I had got... <laughs> On last Thursday, I got the COVID vax and the flu vax at the exact same time. So then the next day, I had a headache and I felt awful. And I like the TV was too bright, so I adjusted the brightness, and I haven't quite gotten it back yet <laughs> to get it back right. So it probably just kind of blurred in the background to the benefit of the movie, I guess. <laughs> so whoever the wants to watch the movie, and every, like it. yeah, right. Just like turn, turn the brightness, turn down the brightness off. Oh, just <laughs> off, just off. You'll be fine. Black screen, you can just listen to it. Um, however, I do think, like as I'm thinking about it, I think the visuals inside were way better than outside. But that's because they spend so much time well, they were, inside. They, yes. So Te- why waste the true. money on the outside? But um, that was the kind of the first thing I thought of when we see the mansion, which is unfortunate. Um, we actually get a pretty decent look of the mansion already, even though it's just the start. Uh, I prefer the 2003 design by far. For the it's exterior, like, I agree. Yeah, Shirley on put out a face that was like full on agreement. Yeah. <laughs> when I said that, like, now that Ooh. I'm thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, I think the exterior of the 2003 was a lot better. The <sighs> interior so better. of this one, I think, was a lot better than the other one. 
The other one just seemed empty to me, which I guess sort of makes sense, but... The other one was very empty and big. Uh, Rosaria Dawson's character and her son are moving into this haunted mansion. They're pulling up with the U-Haul. The son sort of experiences some spooky things while this is happening. The son is immediately scared out of his room. When he finally picks his room, a ghost kind of goes after him. I have another note, all capitals. I have a note that too. I My my note just says, everything looks fake. I read it, wrote in all capitals. <laughs> what was your note? My note was that his bed looks like a monster mouth with teeth. It did and look like teeth, didn't it? And then when he puts his red sleeping bag on it, it looks like a tongue. <laughs> Did it? I, you know, that was probably on. The movie has a visual profile, so it's very. I'm sure that that was on purpose. Oh, I. Be, there's no way it wasn't. Like I'm looking at, I'm like, I. I have a lot I'm of gonna, thoughts in the I'm visuals, and so we'll, myself. we'll talk about. Them. I noticed this. That, that's I don't good. notice these things, <laughs> and I noticed. I was like, that looks like a monster mouth. Now it has a tongue. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's like freaking out about the ghost. There's a lot of focus. There's a lot of purpose to things. It's just a matter of like whether or not you'll like them. Yeah. And for me, like as we'll get into it, there's a lot of just stuff I I visually was not pleased with. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, don't forget, there's a lot of fun content missing from this episode because you're not listening on Patreon. Head over to patreon.com forward slash cinematic doctrine and support for $3 a month to gain access to uncut episodes with upwards of 40 minutes of bonus content each. You'll thank me later. And then my other note is, why does her son look like a little adult man? Yes, there were there was a moment at the end where I'm like, whoa, he looks like an adult. But I do have to say, I don't know the kid's name, like the actor's name, but Chase he was Dylan. on point. Loved him. He needs to be like the only kid actor in Hollywood. Because like <laughs> he, good, his little one-liners, like I wrote one of the lines down, like he's going in and his mom is like, do you love it? And he instantly goes, no. And it was like, there was no pause in between her question yes. and his yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was so great. And he's just like going around. He was great. Love him. He can be in anything and I'll watch I think it. He's, it looks like he's about 13 or 14. In the film, he's supposed to play nine. a nine-year-old, which is weird. Which I thought was a little off. He, they could have ate, they could have gave that a little more. But I guess the movie came out a year or was being filmed a year or two That's ago. True. So that could be about, I don't know, he'd be like 12, 11. But, but anyways, they uh, ghosts start attacking both Rosario Dawson uh whose name is gabby i i got it a little later into the movie but both start attacking gabby and travis is the young boy's name i heard that later in the movie my notes sometimes don't say it though so they end up trying to leave and then that's when we get our title card haunted mansion Mm -hmm. so my next uh sub subcategory title is characters meet so owen wilson a pastor named father kent is meeting ben ben uh father kent meets ben uh, because he made a camera that can view ghost particles. And Father Kent says, I know somebody who needs use of that. Kent was called by the mother and son to exercise their house. Kent says he wanted to work with a ghost professional who he believes is Ben. Minor flashback to when Ben is introduced, uh, introducing the ghost lens to ghost lens to Alyssa. Yeah. It's clear that Ben, while reminiscing about this experience, is uh, sad, but he still gets the camera ready. Uh, then Ben meets up with the mother, whose name is Gabby, um, and he meets her at the haunted mansion. Gabby says, the second you enter this mansion, you will be, um, <laughs> I just said what it is, but she says like a platitude of like, your life will be changed and this and yeah. that. But I knew what it was. And I just wrote the note. Uh, if you walk into this house, you're going to be attached to ghosts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and that's what ghosts happens. are going to be attached to you. Yeah. So my, I had a note and I just said the mar- mansion architecture is very colonial plantation. I do have a comment about that though. The, the style of the house so this kind of, one not the 2003 one well both because like the 2003 had a little bit of that same type of architecture so it is called a plantation style house they're usually square yes this one but is the, yeah. the ride is based on antebellum architecture in like louisiana and stuff pre-civil war yeah anyways um, we then learned Gabby and uh, Travis will camp out in this lounge area. Mm-hmm. Um, they say it's safer there. Uh, ben is kind of confused by that. Uh, I have a note that just says the cinematography sh- is shot kind of weird. It feels like Mr. Robot. Um, some mm-hmm. other parts are just kind of odd. Just the visual profile in general. I have a lot of notes throughout, but that was just one that I had here. Mm-hmm. Gabby says, don't use the flash. The ghosts don't like it. This will never come back up again. Well, they don't use the flash through the through the rest of the movie. So like they, they don't, don't use they the don't flash. talk about well, it. 
But they I don't, don't think they use much. the flash. Yeah, they use like the flashlight to help kind of illuminate things. Yeah, like Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> yeah, right. But all that to say, I they don't use the flash late like throughout the rest of the movie. So like no, there was don't. a response, but I agree. Like they don't say like they don't like the flash because of like this. Like there wasn't like a reaction. Well, if I can even get ahead of this. There's also just no threat to the movie. So the fact that they set up like the ghosts don't like it. Why didn't a character accidentally use the flash and then maybe a ghost does something violent? Like it just seemed odd. Yeah, to, like, like they maybe react in that way. Like they normally wouldn't, but then the flash causes that. I will say there is a threat to the movie, but not because of the flash. So like why point out the flash? It, it would be perfect for dramatic tension of like a car- a person who like Danny DeVito's character is supposed to be silly and aloof. So he would have been the perfect guy to have the camera. And we would have been like worried that he uses a flash. But but anyways, Ben takes quote unquote photos of ghosts. He's making (laughs) fake noises. I thought that was, I got a chuckle out of that. Uh, I have another note that just says the movie is shot all caps. So weird. Um, (laughs) It's interesting. I don't notice those things. I, we're very different in our viewing like it's so interesting. I noticed this in the trailer see, when I would see the trailer so where like me. just out and about and I was like why does it look that way? It just <laughs> I it has a soft millennial digital sheen to it. And on top of that, that it has that. like a very polyester sense to it. It just it seems inauthentic which so much of the film is cg yeah so it makes sense but it's just it's very weird anyways other than a suit of armor moving and maybe a spooky photo no go show up for ben my next note is called they followed you home (laughs) um ben goes home saying the house is not haunted however since he stepped inside he is now connected the ghost from the water painting that ben at one point notices in the film uh has followed him home Ben isn't able to go to sleep because that same ghost is haunting him. I use quotes because I, oh, in my note, I said haunting in quotes. I said it's a haunting uh, in quotes because it's very exaggerated. It's more like oh, a yeah. just outright violent threat. Um, <laughs> but then it's odd because the ghosts want them to go back to help them. I don't, they're really hoping, uh, leaning on the fact that he won't die. But anyways, mm. very weird. I have a note here. I said about 20 minutes in. And the soundtrack has played the organ melody of the Haunted Mansion in different styles several times now. It's actually making the song very annoying. Why are they (laughs) treating such a good haunting and understated melody like it is the song from It's a Small World? (laughs) And it's constant. It is constant. I could not stand it. (laughs) It's so funny because like I, again, this is another thing that I don't notice when I'm watching things. So. Oh For man, if me, you if you dare so, to now, watch this again, it'll be I'm like gonna you're gonna rip your hair out. <laughs> probably. Well, that's probably why I'm like humming it at the beginning of this podcast, and I'm like, uh, and it's like subliminally in the back. Now, comparatively to the 2003 movie, they only play it maybe once, twice, like, at, definitely once at the or beginning. Twice. Yeah. But I wanted to say, I just find it so, and I think we talked about this in like a podcast way back when about like, and we just kind of talked about. Um, how we view movies and for me i just watch to watch occasionally i'll pick up on things and be like oh that sounds cool or that was a cool line that cinematography looked a little strange or whatever i just watch i consume things that way i just like want to kind of get lost and escape in it whether it's movies books whatever i can't usually critically look at something now if i'm watching movies like you do you seem to watch movies like every day well i would say i'm actually just kind of doing exactly what you described too i think i just I just, it's like eating food. We just eat food differently, even if it's the same. And we totally have different fair. things we enjoy about it. Yeah. But I, I, if you didn't get bothered by it, that's fine. For yeah. me, it was just like, I was, I was getting <laughs> frustrated because I, in the 2003 one, I, I really celebrated the soundtracks because yeah. we were talking, first we wanted to talk about the Haunted Mansion in general and say like, what do we think about it? And mm-hmm. I said like, it's a great experience. It's so deeply rich in terms of what you can engage and also the song and the vibe that you get from it mm-hmm. is so good it is such yeah. an excellent progression of notes and mm-hmm. even like when you're in line in the ride it is like a very quiet almost like a whisper in you know, the distance humming mm-hmm. noise yeah and i just felt like it was so odd that a soundtrack who's that a song that is like your first experience in settling into it is subtle 
in the most smallest font I can put it yeah. <laughs> and, and, and sizing is then used to such a degree that it literally is like the antithesis of the song, which is of all songs, which is it's a small world. And it's very weird, right? No, you definitely it's it's really interesting because like you're saying with a ride, it's it's throughout the entire ride. But the point, some of the things that they did with the ride was like they did the exact same song the entire time, but they changed it up for different parts of the ride. Like they did. Gosh, maybe maybe that's a good counterpoint to what I think, honestly. it's Yeah. So like the ride, the song is played throughout the whole thing. Some of the notes yes. are a little bit different. The melody is a little bit different depending on where you're at. Sometimes it's a little more haunting. Sometimes it's a little more jovial. And then you get to the end and everyone's singing it. And it's like a big party. And so I, I do wonder if that's kind of what they were going for in the movie, because it it does like the very beginning was like they took a couple. There's a musical term for it, but I don't know what it is. But they took a couple of notes out. It still sounds like it, but it's not exactly the same. But then for the different parts of the movie, it like picks up, it goes down, it changes yes. this way. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like jazz. It sounds like this instead. And I wonder if that's part of the reason why they did it. Was That's it a good idea? Theory. I don't know. Especially if it does get under the skin and gets annoying. It's like, okay, this is getting overplayed. It is a That's good idea, I yeah. think, if that's kind of what they were going for, was to kind of emulate the ride. But I think for a two-hour mo- it's like a four-minute ride, eight-minute tops. It's, I don't a know. Ride, it's a short ride. It's a short ride. You're engaged. You're moving song. on. Yeah, and then you go to another part of the park and you're hearing something else. Two hours yes. later, you're still oh not gosh. listening to Haunted yes. Mansion. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I can see why in the movie it gets a little too much. But I would be curious to know if that's part of the reason why they did it. But yeah, th- this was about the time when it really started to get to me. And then I still had an hour and a half left. Yep, to, to I was going to say, it. this is just when he's getting like <laughs> tossed out of his house with an yeah. ocean wave and getting yep. almost hit by a car. <laughs> it's really <laughs> That was so brutal. long ago. <laughs> You may not know this, but the easiest way you can show your support for Cinematic Doctrine is to rate and review the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen. So press pause and share your thoughts. We'd love to hear what you have to say. And then press play again so you can hear the rest of the show. So anyways, Ben returns to the Haunted Mansion. Uh, Gabby and Kent help convince Ben to work alongside them. The plan. Use the spectral camera to see each ghost and investigate each one individually. In doing so, they might be able to learn something from them. Um, So my next note, after midnight and the plan. So everyone stays in the lounge while Ben explores after midnight and really confirms again that the house is, in fact, actually definitely seriously haunted for sure. (laughs) I made that note because for some reason they... They have essentially asserted it by this point four times that the place is haunted to this character. He's just so in denial, and I think he's just so wrapped up with like the grief. It could play into his grief of his thing. wife, and like he like refuses to talk about ghosts and all that kind of stuff. Um, and like I just I don't know if this was on purpose, but I, just just before he leaves to go back to the, like he's gathering the stuff for his camera, like the real time for the camera, like the, um, or was it, it was when he was trying to get an image of the ghost of the ghost that's haunting him. Mm-hmm. He's at his little thing. And I don't know if you noticed this. I felt like you though. And I did notice this. <laughs> he's like rif- <laughs> rifling through his shelf, getting all his stuff. And there's a jar, a clay jar. And it says answers. And I just thought that was kind of like cute because I feel like for him, his whole life, he's going to be looking for answers. Like why? Like his his wife like he met Mm -hmm. his wife Mm -hmm. he's the scientist she's the ghost hunter and then they kind of come together and then stuff happens and then like he's like i don't believe in ghosts this house is definitely haunted times four and then like all that kind of and i just thought that was like a cute little like thing it's like one of those jars where you're like every time you say a swear word put a coin in um so like maybe it's like every time you're asking for answers put a coin and i just thought that was cute whether or not it was on purpose or not i'm like huh he's always going to be looking for answers or he's looking for answers in his life. And yeah, this and is the movie going to, this movie's going to answer that for him. He's going to get his answers. Right. So at this point, Kent has also been inside the uh, yeah. house. Um, but so ben he's Kent, also haunted. Yeah. So they they all have, because they step, once you step into the mansion and you get a ghost attached to you, the only way to solve it is to figure out what's wrong with the mansion. So that that's, that's, that's not threat. That's resolve in my opinion. I mean, they have threat because the ghosts like, does this extravagant thing to him. But um, part of what makes this is going to be an odd comparison, but part of what makes something like watching the saw movies fun is they're so over the top that they're not like real. 
Yeah. And like in that way, it, it makes it funny. It makes it fun. You get to react to it. You get to feel grossed out. Saw X, or as I heard it on another podcast, Socks. Um, Love that. It's just a really good um, <laughs> uh, uh, with Kermo de Mayo. They always have fun uh, names for stuff. That's great. Um, but they um, mentioned how like it it just crosses beyond violence into just like giddy silliness and. For this, the extravagance of the haunt that happens to Ben when he's at his house is so Disney-fied, oh, yeah. Marvel-ified that it just like I wasn't like afraid anymore. It just felt like a Marvel villain, like Aquaman attacked him at his house. Yeah. So it just the threat to me isn't there, but the purpose and resolve of like this annoying thing, like we've all had a rash and been like, I gotta go see my doctor because this thing isn't killing me, but it's really annoying. It's annoying, like, yeah. Like, but but I also like I want my ghost movie to be like threatening i want eddie murphy to look into a mirror and think he just died um yeah. because he turned into a zombie but which i thought was actually really interesting between the two movies that like 2003 definitely had more of like a it's well, a sort of it scary was a movie more scary I, yeah. would ar- I would argue against that but if we're i gonna vaguely do some remember being a kid thinking it was pretty freaky yeah if we're gonna compare that definitely had more of like a scare the 2023 definitely as you say has the disney fied like there was like i thought when, right at the beginning when Travis is like in his room and he sees the ghost and she does that like shaky head thing that ghosts do. I'm like, <laughs> the that's Jacob's terrifying. <laughs> like I would be terrified if I saw a ghost that did that. Like that's not okay with me. Um, of course, I'm watching a Disney movie, so it's What, what funny. is acceptable ghost behavior for you? None. No ghost behavior <laughs> is acceptable for me. Freaks me You're out. Anti-ghost. No, thank you. I'm anti-ghost. <laughs> I, I agree with you and the whole idea of like ghosts as like human spirits don't exist, but like I also yeah, believe yes. demons are a thing, and like we're just gonna stop talking about it or I'm gonna have nightmares tonight. <laughs> yeah, but demons then there's like a, yeah. very fast, and that's super scary. <laughs> well, it's just like it's like the like the little like little. Well, you watch horror movies, so you're like desensitized to horror. I'm not, not desensitized okay? to horror. I find <laughs> things scary. That's why I like watching them. <laughs> you're so strange. Anyway. <laughs> You're, oh, I can't believe you're my I brother. just know movies aren't real. <laughs> I just know that this, nothing fair. has ever come out of my television except for maybe a static shock and a little <laughs> bit of dust off of my screen when I clean it. That's totally <laughs> fair. No, you're totally fair. Uh, meanwhile, I'm over here watching like YouTubers play horror games and then an earthquake goes by on Sunday and like jolts the entire sofa. <laughs> that and that I scream. Of 87? <laughs> uh, Five nights I definitely scream. So well, hard. I thought it was my cat. My silly little cat having the zoomies. Anyway, where was I? Um, I do. <laughs> no, like, where was no, I? Let's get to the no, summary. No, no. I just wanted to say that, like, I liked that the 2023 had that uh. Disney-fied spook factor because I feel like the Haunted Mansion ride for a kid is terrifying. As an adult, you're like, that's scary. I see the terror in that, but this is so cute and fun and like childish and just like sparkly and cartoony. And I feel like the 2023 version captured that in a lot of in wow, the filming I feel, so, I feel the opposite really i just like, I, I the whole literally time feel the opposite. A, if yeah. thomas were here i would probably be like oh my gosh thomas i love this so much it was such a great movie i thought it was great <laughs> and like i see like yes it is not the princess bride it is not lord of the rings like it's no, not no, a no, great no, no, no. I, don't, I don't think you're saying that at all i think it captured the disney feel of the haunted mansion very well in my oh, disney adult opinion but we can talk about that later please continue with the summary <laughs> <laughs> yeah well uh, we'll definitely have a lot of things to say when we sum- summarize at the p- is this a party pleaser or a party pooper? which i realized i forgot to mention in the beginning that's what we do at the end after we summarize it we decide if this is a party <laughs> pleaser or a party pooper so if you've still been listening after 30 minutes and didn't know what the show was about that's what this show is about so ben and kent realize they need a historian to help them learn about the house so when they figure out what ghosts are in the house they can communicate talk to this historian so they go meet to danny devito whose character's name is bruce and then they also seek a psychic uh who's played by tiffany haydish her name is Her- 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 harriet harriet i think it's not harriet. henrietta it's harriet yeah. um they set up some cameras around the haunted mansion they never use them <laughs> um there's a lot of <laughs> they kind of never them, not barely there's a we have one scene where we see that they're using them but there's yeah. never really there's a lot of stuff that's in the film that doesn't do any that that has no value. And this isn't like a the clever it's not red herrings which are purposeful yeah. things. This is just literally there's just a recurrence of things that just happen. The, but by this point our our main cast has been introduced. 
and I have a note that just says, literally, what are these costume designs? Even God, in the trailer, I remember being like, this is, <laughs> what is this? But if you like them, cool. Disney. I just, <laughs> it's Disney. I never That's what it got is. into it. I, I just want to know, what it. is the time period? What time period did this take place in? Because the costumes were like the main, co- like Gabby and Travis. I didn't know. Is this 2020? Are they in 2023? I don't, I don't know. It, it's so odd. Uh, it, the costume. It's so weird. The art direction of this film is so weird it is clearly <sighs> thought out but it feels yes. like if i took tumblr knows characters from tumblr and turned them into <laughs> a movie art stuff like that's, that's kind of what it feels like like sans undertale is going to show up in the film at some point it's super <laughs> super weird how yeah. all of this stuff is decided and then made it into the final product and then <sighs> clearly didn't connect with anybody because nobody saw the movie and the people who did didn't like it but um, well, in theaters, I'm talking it. about. I, I'm, I like because I don't know if you knew that, but this movie made no I, money. I think I do. Well, one, <laughs> they didn't put it out during Halloween, which let's which I'm real. pretty sure it was so they could have it come to streaming on Halloween. I think that well, was their plan. But that do was something a clear special miss. and have it at the beginning of October, and then be like, surprise, Halloween. Hey there, listener. Want to influence the podcast? Head on over to patreon.com forward slash cinematic doctrine and support the show for $3 a month. In doing so, you'll be able to vote on a movie poll that picks a film we discuss each month. So jump on over there and have your voice heard. So Travis uh, runs from some bullies at school and says that he knows that the ghosts are afraid of something because he knows what it's like to run away from something. I thought that was just sweet. a weird. Oh, it was man, weird. I, I think was it was weird. weird. But... I definitely think it was like a weird way to connect everything, like to tell the story of like why are the ghosts wanting them to come back? Oh, because they're hiding, they're running away from something. Little, little shaky there, but I thought it was cute character development for Travis. One detail I did like is it said that in 1788, really. So the historian uh, Bruce yeah. is saying that the house. Um, the earliest evidence of the house was in 1788 and the evidence of the house was specifically just that it existed there already. Mm-hmm. Not like that it was, it was weird. Made. Yeah. And I was like, just okay, like, no building. Cool. Like, yeah. Yeah. And then my note, uh, <laughs> Oh, this is like the most violent note I wrote and violent as in like, I, I just wrote flat out. I said, no, we're at a point where even embarrassing movies look as good as real movies. <laughs> I really, <laughs> Gosh, so I think so we crazy. know what Melvin thought of the movie. <laughs> I I don't remember what exactly precipitated me writing that thought, but I saw something around that point in the film, and I just kept thinking, "This is embarrassing," oh, and man. I wrote that. So my next <laughs> my next step, that's a brutal note. That's oh, really no. funny. So some more rising action is the next category. Uh, owners of the home. So we start learning some details with the house. The owner of the home. Their wife had died. The owner of a home, I didn't know the character's name yet. That's why this Gracie. note is a mess to read. So William Gracie's wife had died of an illness. The Yellow fever, then, if that matters. <laughs> what, which one was it? Yellow fever. Oh, uh, okay. It would at least date it, maybe. Um, and yeah. if there was going to be a sequel, maybe they would be speaking to this. But anyways, yeah. William Gracie um, then ends up killing himself in response to this. Uh, and it's mysterious. They don't know why. Then it says following owners of the house. Um, would die of oddly specific or extreme circumstances. We learn about like a mutual <laughs> I death. That was so weird. Like what? Just saying the, that the, anyone well, else. Well, first off, owned... the line delivery by Ben was great, and like oddly specific ways. I'm like that just is weird. Like I feel like that's just a way to kind of bring in like the different like deaths. Isn't it of so weird ride. that people die? <laughs> yeah, right. But like, I mean, I, I'm like, okay. I guess it's so they can have like different types of ghosts here for some reason, but like oddly specific. It's to give a reason to have the ghosts from the mo- the ride. The rides, in. yeah. So it has the gold digger murderer, um, the wife uh, who yes. marries people and, and takes their money. Yeah, That's her name, I think. As they're doing this like uh, historical check, they're check they're seeing the the floor plan of a house which had been a previous record, and they realize there's a secret doorway found behind a particular painting so they check out the what's in there which it's a i don't know why it took them so long to be like there's a room back there i'm like yeah it's a giant painting it's gonna be a door like come on so they make their way downstairs yes yeah, so they go to through the and they find the sand room. room behind the secret passageway kent says probably the best part of the movie uh kent says maybe he should pray for them 
uh, real quick as they enter the century old cave dwelling seance room. And his prayer is this verbatim. God, give us a break. We don't want to be haunted. It just seems like there's so many bad people in the world. Haunt them. Uh, my note says first genuine chuckle in the movie. Yes. I have an annoyance in this okay. scene. I, it? Sorry, I have to point it out. When they are like, oh, there's oil. Oh, I know what this is. And he lights a match and he drops it in the oil. And you know what the fire doesn't do? Run up the spout yes, of oil yes, and explode. Yes. <laughs> like, I was I literally, so my brain annoyed. said... Don't do that. <laughs> turn off the spigot. Turn off the spigot. I'm just like, really? Everyone just, knows. You just set oil on fire. What about the thing that's coming out of the barrel? I was so. I know. I was so. There annoyed. was some. We've all <sighs> seen videos of people who their cigarette falls into the gas tank and right? they pull the gas uh, pipe out and then it lights their car on fire uh, um, in like a nonviolent way. I've never seen a traumatic. What, well, just I don't more know. Like a, an old fail video. I'm invite, saying it's probably happened. I'm just say, saying me. Like, invite right? mom onto the podcast to talk about Zoolander, and we will learn uh, well, how fire and different. gasoline do not mix. Well, like <laughs> Zoolander, <laughs> another very funny Owen Wilson movie. Oh, yeah. I forgot um, he was in that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the funniest part of the movie <laughs> is in the first third of the film <laughs> because this is the this is the highlight of the film for me it's not even that high i chuckled i did the like the heavy breathing out the nose which is like a reaction <laughs> but um anyways so uh i showed yeah i even rewound this to show it to my wife and she says oh it's because owen wilson said it and i was yeah. like yeah you're right, you're right. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so picking picking up the pace here so we get to the seance uh tiffany haters hosts, hosts her seance note this movie Oh, I just said this movie is not funny. It's just embarrassing. I think it's because she had some comedy lines here and I just didn't find them funny. Mm. Gracie uh, writes a note that says, uh, talk to Leota. Mm -hmm. Ben asked to speak with his wife through a seance, Alyssa. So we're learning that she's dead. Um, before they can do anything, though, the gang is kicked out of the house before they can talk to Leota by uh, by some form of evil force. Mm -hmm. um, visually, they're making it look like... Um, the ride. The ride because mm -hmm. the chair has that all shape the to all it. the I think almost all of the chairs they were sitting on are in the ride. The one with the bird on the back is uh, when you're in oh, the Madame Leota section. Um, mm. It's the one sitting behind, and then obviously Tiffany Haydish's seat is the the ride seats, yes, and then the one yeah, that Ben is sitting like in is just like an armchair during the ride that you see and actually has a mm. monster face on it um i don't know about all the, like the chairs that travis and owen wilson sit on i don't know about those because i, yeah, really I, do, I those, can't remember but... i can't even remember what the chairs totally look like at the ride i just remember they're egg shaped mm -hmm. but which that was all practical by the way like um pulling her out of the house was a, like an actual stunt oh just, that's cool just saying good because they didn't have a lot so uh, <laughs> i'm glad that they had something like that and it didn't look bad um yeah, that's fun the result of the seance um kicked out of the house by evil force but then they're just let back into the house question mark <laughs> so i just said like it yeah. didn't have any result or purpose unless i think it might have just been that time that the evil force was able to like get them out of the house and like after midnight less power and like so they're able to get back in kind of thing I, I could yeah, they argue do kind of that, that but they don't do a very good job because i thought that too i was like well now they're out of the house like what do they do now so but yeah so the next night uh ben is called by a mysterious ghost he falls it to the cemetery uh um, oh, he thinks it's it his wife out, yeah it's it's his wife does his jumpy scary face but it was all a dream so it's like an omen scene mm -hmm. um bruce goes missing so they have to go find him it's after midnight though so they're worried so they're very cautious and searching for him and he just like appears behind them doesn't he like where did he end up did i miss he appears something? like up he's in like the hallway i can't remember oh, okay um they just kind of meet out there uh harriet goes with ben um they find bruce who was seeking for leota he's just like i needed to find leota i need to find leota um, so he's just like a delusional old person, I guess, in the movie. That's kind of just the gag with him. I also have found his, I don't understand his outfits. Anyways, his outfits are like, <laughs> I love the, that like plastic raincoat thing. I'm well, like, the I plastic is like if he was a couch at an old person's home yeah. who puts like the plastic over the cushion and you're yeah. like, this de literally defeats the purpose of the couch. Yes. You have made the couch more uncomfortable. Yeah. I'd like to think that Danny DeVito picked that out specifically. Like, it's possible. if I'm going to be in this, I'm wearing that. It's like, all right. Enjoying this episode? 
Grab that share link and tell your friends. Word of mouth is the most effective way for a podcast to reach new listeners, so don't be shy. Share the episode wherever you can. Um, but they end up finding Bruce. He says, we have to find Leota. Let's go check the attic. So Ben um, runs to the attic. The wife goes. Uh, the attic wife ghost is up there trying to kill him. Uh, then he just gets away. And we don't really see him like succeed in getting away. It just sort of cuts he to falls, just him yeah. falling out and getting away. I thought she's like, he's like ghost baby. Hey, baby, baby. Can I call you ghost babe? And I'm just like, <laughs> really? He's good, but <laughs> okay. it's just rough. So they find Madame Leota. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis appears as Madame Leota inside the crystal ball. Uh, so Gracie, this is the pack story. Mm-hmm. Gracie had requested Leota, who was a known, very strong, powerful medium, to contact her dead wife for an entire year, but it didn't work. Because of this, uh, there was a constant stream of ghosts that were entering the house through this practice. A ghost at some point tricked Gracie into killing himself, saying that if you do this, uh, you'll be with me again. You'll be with me again, uh, deluding him into thinking it's the wife. Mm-hmm. Turns out this was some form of evil spirit tricking her, tricking him into thinking this. That spirit seemed to stick around for a long time. And then Madame Leota learned about it. But the spirit then captured her and put her inside the crystal ball, which is why she's now in it. So if you ever wanted to know the deep lore of the crystal ball girl at the Haunted Mansion ride, now you know. <laughs> Yay. Um, so if they find any important object, they learn that if they find an important object, they can then use it to banish the specific evil presence that may be trapped inside the house. And that would also free the 900 some odd ghosts that are inside. 999. Uh, yeah. At this point, though, I had a note and it was just the boy's name is Travis. <laughs> this is like an hour and 15 minutes in the movie. I didn't hear it until then. Well, you uh, would have figured it out later in the movie because they say it a couple of times when they're trying gosh, to find they say him. it a lot at some point. <laughs> Travis, Travis, <Yeah>. Travis. <laughs> the next day, uh, heart to heart between Ben and Travis. That's all I wrote. It, it's not that important. Um, we know that Tra- we learned basically Travis is talking with his father. And Ben is just comforting him. Uh, there, there seems to be distance. Uh, Travis says, dad wants me to go see him. Uh, we're not sure of the relationship between Travis, Gabby, and this uh, absent father. But we just know that that's present. Anyways, heart to heart. That's kind of it. Um, next thing is the reverse seance or astral projection. So Harriet <laughs> uh, says we can do a reverse seance to basically have one of the living people go into the dead person world, the Mm -hmm. ghost world. And maybe that can be some way we find some information. So Harriet begins um, her traversal to the ghost realm. And she wants to be the one to do it. Yeah. She wants Um, to be the one to do it. I have some thoughts about her character, but we can, we can talk about that at the end. Yeah. So this seems pretty quick. So I'll, uh, cause it's mostly an action scene and then we'll do that. Um, So then Ben enters the ghost realm instead of her. And runs into Gracie, who then hides from him, um, which seemed weird to me if Gracie had then told them previously to find Leota, which to me implies Gracie would want to work with them. But then Ben is running around trying to catch up to and find Gracie, but then Gracie keeps running away from him. It could be a bit of like the, wait, what is going on? Like, you're here. I didn't see how many writers were on the movie, but it. That to me just feels like something that would happen where if you had different writers on a film, you would just have this confused. It looks, yeah. it says one writer. Um, it to me comes off as some usually that I'm trying to like figure out the words mm-hmm. I need for this. Uh, usually what would happen is if you have multiple writers, different writers are writing the same character, but it's not the same character in every mm-hmm. writer's head. And yeah. so then you have some things that come up where maybe the one character named G- uh, Gracie is helping the main characters but then another writer wants to make them a little more trickster so then you get this two different kinds of gracie yeah. who then is shot on screen because that's what you're stuck with but the dark spirit know. whatever it is ends up attacking ben ben is able to at some point escape and then the the gang discusses the aftermath of ben going into the ghost realm what what were your thoughts that you said yeah so i just have thought um harriet's character i actually really like her at first i wasn't a huge fan she came off a little strong at the beginning was a little bit annoying um but the um the first time i like realized i liked her was when they finally meet madame leota and she's taught like and like harriet's like she's like the greatest medium ever and like basically Mm -hmm, mm fangirling over madame leota so when they find her she's excited and practically like oh my gosh you're my idol and like i don't remember exactly what is said but Madame Leota says something that like hits Harriet and like she's hurt by it. And like 
the, um, her face just kind of falls like, oh, you don't think I'm it, essentially like you don't think I'm good enough to do mm. this. So then when the se- the reverse seance happens, Harriet is the one that wants to go. Like she's like, I'm going to be the one to do it probably because she's like, well, I'm the medium. So it makes sense. And then after, and you'll, I mean, although I don't know if this scene necessarily, how much of it has to be talked about, but, um, or I guess it does kind of go into a little bit of um, Ben's background, but she, like they're all gathered around in front of the fireplace after the reverse seance. And she's kind of in the background sad oh, and upset yes, that's because right. she feels yeah. like she's not good enough like i've always been told i don't have the power i don't have enough and stuff like that and i just thought that like the subtlety of like the actress just kind of showing like oh that comment by my idol like really hurt and dug and like kind of just shows some of the insecurities and i just thought that was really sweet and then she does have that sweet moment um with ben uh, earlier in the movie when he like they're talking about the wife and she's like I'm really sorry and she's just talking to him and he's just looking at her and like listening and what's what's the actor's name? Lakeith Stanfield. Lakeith. He's he good. He's freaking sells, good. <laughs> like, I just well first off I just love that he cries so much in this movie and like he ugly really cries. Cry. he ugly cries which i appreciate <laughs> so much like men need to ugly cry more often. <laughs> yes, yes. They really do because it sells first off like I just want to say, as a woman, one, I ugly cry, and it's uh, ugly. <laughs> so I really want to see men ugly cry, too. But I just thought it was really sweet that, like, because I was expecting him to, like, fight back against her and be like, what are you talking? You know nothing. Da, 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 da. You know nothing of my pain. He, all that his kind character of is a good just, listener. He constantly he is listening to people. He takes it in. Yeah. And you can tell, like, he appreciates what she, what she is saying. Because she's not saying you need to get rid of your grief. You need to do that. Like, you got to get rid of it. Like, she's like yeah you hurt and he just sits there and cries and i'm just like i want to give you a hug and be like here's a cup of coffee and a cookie keep crying it's totally (laughs) fine like i just thought that was a really beautiful scene especially between those two characters because she is dealing with a bunch of insecurity about herself and then he's super sad and like they did there were i agree that this movie is messy but i feel like there are moments with the characters themselves that were really really strong and had their moments and that's those two i think and oh, we're working with good Travis, actors but those two i think actors. really sold their characters very well and they developed really well throughout but yeah anyway so the gang is discussing the aftermath of this event of the so it was the reverse seance where ben almost gets attacked by the dark spirit so this is the first time so this is a dramatic scene you just sort of explained it i'll just catch it up again yeah. but um Ben's, we learned that the backstory, Ben's wife died in a car crash and he reminisces about the experience and how it was just so painful and hard for him. He's crying the whole time and he sells it and I wanted to cry. Yeah, I said like, look, Keith is a great um, actor. Owen is funny, but just the scene, it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Mm-hmm. But I, I see what it is and I say like, yeah, that's quality stuff for a reel, but maybe not for like, for like an actor's reel, but not necessarily in this movie. I'm just not, I'm not in it. And that was all I had on that section was backstory. I just felt like that particular scene really felt like the movie just stopped and it kind of shuddered um, to kind of do this quick yeah. character thing that it wasn't doing. They could have done that a little earlier in the movie, I think. They don't. The, the script does not balance storytelling with action. Yeah. It doesn't find a way to share yeah. information in an exciting way. It only ever shares information and conversation and people sitting. The Literally, this scene, everyone's sitting. Show. And then action is entirely separate. In fact, yeah. when we get to the climax, I just stopped taking notes. And I wrote a note that just said, <laughs> So did I, actually. I have nothing to write. <laughs> and it was like think, the last 15 minutes. Yeah, I think the problem might have been like the idea to move to like, when we reveal who the bad guy is, sorry, the bad ghost, um, Got grief is what kind of drives him. Now I'm thinking, I can't remember why, but I think that's kind of what they were trying to get at with him telling the backstory of his dead wife and all that kind of stuff. And like, there needed to be a little bit more, I think, to flesh that out, to like explain this idea of grief and how that is giving more power to this evil spirit. They needed to show it a little bit more instead of tell. Gosh, I just, I get it, but it just, it doesn't, this, the, the movie at this point, we're an hour and 10 minutes into the movie and it just, it just shows it can't, 
do it. It can't like like I, I didn't even check to see who the director was. It says mm. Justin Simeon. I just I, like I'm like I don't think they're handling this material well at at all. I feel like they had a good idea. Like I don't hate the idea of like this evil ghost needs one more that hundredth ghost to to like gain power but again for what like that's kind of what they were missing is like why does he need this power what is the plan grief is the vehicle to like make you more susceptible and vulnerable they needed a little like there's just i feel like they needed to kind of go right back to the editing room maybe once or twice more and just kind of figure something out uh, more than editing but like it's it's a lot they kind of need they needed to flesh it out a little it needed to be a little meatier to I think really explain what was going on. I think it's just, I think the movies, I think the movie's broken. I think that (laughs) there's just problems that needed to be fleshed out as far back as production. Want some quick updates on the podcast? Follow the cinematic doctrine Instagram for cool posts and story updates. Press the link in the show notes or search cinematic doctrine. That's one word in your Instagram app. Oh, and we're on threads. Check us out there too. But um, the resulting plan. So after this event takes place where Ben is almost captured by the ghost and then we learn more about his character. uh, In a somewhat funny gag ruined by bad editing and intrusive music, Ben and Bruce visit the place, uh, visit to the police to have a profile (laughs) artist sketch what Ben saw of the ancient evil ghost so they can learn about him. Um, Yeah, in theory, I thought this was actually a pretty funny gag. So basically (laughs) what happens is Ben saw the face of the ghost um the ancient evil ghost that seems to be separate from the other ghosts and so they visit um sketch the, artist. The prof- a sketch artist <laughs> a police profile sketch artist and he describes what he saw and he show the, the sketch artist shows it and it's a perfect drawing it's oh, actually yeah. pretty funny i think it's um, great <laughs> it's it's basically the reverse joke to scott pilgrim looking for ramona flowers and he's like it's a girl that looks like this and it's like a doodle like a real real bad doodle <laughs> and then all the pause is like oh that's ramona um <laughs> and uh uh but then uh at the end of it it's the skeletal being and they say put skin on it and then it ends up being yeah uh, the guy I and loved, i was like okay I that's thought kind that of was funny. really funny because the whole time like the sketch artist and the cop were like what the heck is going yeah like they're just playing along what with it. and then he flips it over and i love the look of the sketch artist being like wait really like he's yeah. like, I got it. I was like, oh, yeah. he's so proud of what he did. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you can put it on his Instagram. It looks there really you good. go. Um, but we end time. up learning that this character's name is Alistair Crump. Bad name. Um, a real bad dude. Uh, he would throw parties and he'd secretly kill guests, uh, guests who came by. He has backstory reasons for that. They don't really matter. Um, the gang learns of uh, Alistair's previous properties that he's owned, so they end up going to search one of them, uh, which I heard was based off of specifically the design of the Haunted Mansion in Florida, whereas the Haunted Mansion that the it, movie like the takes movie. place in is the Probably one California. in California. Yeah, I could see it. I didn't get a good look at I think I looked Me too, away for and a also, second. oddly, the design of the Haunted Mansion in Florida it's so weird that I've yeah. always had difficulty trying to figure out what it's supposed to look like. And yeah. then the line is so cleverly set up as oh, you're yeah. going into it that at some point you get lost in the line before you even enter the house. So it's really hard. And to you're tell. looking at all the stuff in the line. Like you hardly ever, I don't even, I remember when the house was being They're just so like, good at renovated. what they do. <laughs> They're so oh, good yeah. at what they do with theme parks. No one's like them. Yeah, they find out that he has a previous property and they're like, if we go to his previous property, we might be able to find an item that is specific and important to him. And then we can do that objective we needed to before, which was find an item that's important to him. We can use it to defeat him. So Crump traps Ben and Travis in the raising room. So we get the opening thing of the line in the Florida ride. Maybe it's in the other ones too, but in the Florida ride, it's there. They end up escaping. I this I didn't write this note, but basically this was when... So really overtly, this scene is when it's so plain that they are just doing a movie short film version of apart from the ride yeah. which is this particular part if you haven't been on the haunted mansion ride in florida when you're in the waiting room uh when they're in line disney does this thing where they put really interesting things around you to look at so you don't feel bored while you're in line and then they have like three two one to two semi like checkpoints and these mm-hmm. checkpoints will be narrative 
and they'll be kind of interesting. So you're at, you're at one point when you step inside of the Haunted Mansion, there's a, there's a video, there's an audio tape that plays and you hear about the Haunted Mansion. You step into another room and another audio tape plays. But as you're in it, the floor slowly goes down about a couple of inches, but the ceiling raises really high up. So it makes it look like you're falling and descending into the, the mm-hmm. earth. Um, it's really cool. And as it's doing this, the photos that are on the wall are getting longer, showing that these characters are getting like killed or going to die. Mm-hmm. Um, you learn that like uh, the ceiling is cracked and it's nighttime. So it feels like you're being transported in a different world. It's all great. Mm-hmm. Um, and there it's really good. But in the movie, yeah. <laughs> I just thought like, I don't like this. I thought it was it, clever, but it definitely that's where this far into the movie it was I feel really like it brought me out. yeah it yeah was like, we have something... to put something very over from the game from the game from the from the ride into the movie so it was like a little too over the top i yeah, thought it was kind of clever i think yeah it's the, the part of my brain I that went the alligator okay, I crawling up the wall was a little much <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had they had to really whatever. shove everything. In. They needed it him to weird. fall so he could set off, like <sighs> extinguish the fire that was going to go boom. So they had to they had to have him climbing up because how else yes. is it going to splash? Which right, yeah, I think it was a little much. I it agree. was really really odd. But this particular Although that scene, is my favorite part of the ride. It is a really great part of the ride, and it's which, a great start to a ride that quick, continues to be great. Super fun f- f- fact: in California, it actually is an elevator that takes you underground, wow, and that's where the I ride is. That. In Florida, it's the ceiling that moves up, and then you stay in one. Place. So does the floor not move at all in Florida? Because I thought it Florida, moved a tiny it's bit. The ceil- it might move a little bit to kind of to get you down to like a little bit of a platform, but it doesn't. It's not an elevator like it is in California. Yes. Yeah. I know it doesn't go. It's not yeah. like a, an elevator at all. Because I yeah. always thought it moved down the tiniest bit very slowly to then make your brain go, I'm it moving might, down. It might, um, like, just subtly enough. But, like, probably, like, I don't, again, I this I did and not look up. Maybe, like, actually, an inch, but it is a if ceiling. it doesn't move, this then just shows how good it is. Right? <laughs> because you really feel but, like, like <laughs> it. Yeah, you're all, like, but, and, like, you're not paying attention to it. It's probably the lighting the, the yes, wallpaper all that kind there, of so you, stuff yeah. so like it does feel mm-hmm. like you're moving and maybe you're not so disney it's so cool man they are they're gonna take over <laughs> the world and i'm pros. not gonna be upset <laughs> if it's theme parks i don't mind <laughs> right i'm all right with that i'm all for it so they end up doing this particular thing but they get out um mm-hmm. and ben and travis end up running into kent who then drives them out of the mansion they're gonna go to this new place um also bruce may have died we don't know <laughs> oh yeah he's like in the middle of having a heart attack or something yeah so then now we're at crump manor Forgot about that uh winona rider trigger blessing is what i wrote um because she's blessing. great <laughs> she did well i liked her as i would take her as a tour guide as i don't think she's she did it this way. it's just great that she's that's there. fine yeah i didn't know she was going to be in it so i was like who <laughs> was is great. that who is that i'm like oh you didn't hear her from the voice I, as well, soon that's as what she I was, talked i was like, was like that's winona rider <laughs> <laughs> so there's a rumor that perhaps Crump's head be- – so basically Crump ended up getting killed by people who believe that he was killing all of the people at these parties, yeah. which was true. They, yeah, was they were saying, like, they okay, correctly. Yeah. <laughs> so they went into his home. They decapitated him. And then they said uh, – there's a rumor that while they found his body, they never found his head. Which and is so- weird because there was a whole group of people in that flashback that cut off his head. Where the heck – did the head go that no one was able to find it? Like, did it just grow legs? It could have been just like an, an omen thing that like uh, a group of <laughs> like, people would say, like separate the body from the head and you're, yeah. you're, you're and damning like, his Between spirit. here and the graveyard, someone lost it. That's totally yeah. fair. <laughs> but the note that I said was, okay, clever joke or a clever like inference that's being taken place. In case I remember – the totally silly but fun to believe rumor of Walt Disney is that his head has <laughs> yes. been preserved in an ice cooler, either in Haunted Mansion or Splash Mountain. I can't I remember think it which was one. Splash, I want to say it was Splash Mountain. I think it was Splash Mountain too. But making which the idea that like this World head anymore. is somewhere there, yeah. At this point, they would have they would have found it. I'm just gonna put it yeah, out woke, there. If it woke was mountain, gonna be, it's gonna be woke mountain now. No, it's um, Tiana's place. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. As long as I have beignets, yeah, then I'm cool. happy. <laughs> Really, if they did Black Cauldron, that would have been dope. But Oh, that would have um, been good. Hello. <laughs> um, but, okay, so the gang works together with the ghost that follows. Because whenever they leave the mansion, the ghost, ghost will follow them. So they work together with a ghost to find Crump's head. 
Um, in theory, I like this idea. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the some of the parts of the movie I I like it just doesn't work I think but for me um, Travis uh, they find a corridor that leads to a secret passageway but only Travis can fit into it so he goes into it <laughs> I thought that was a cute exchange <laughs> I'm a yeah, kid pretty funny yeah I know but you're going in <laughs> but you're going in yeah uh, it's an underhouse catacomb of graves that Crump filled with the victims the punny graves neat. by the way from the ride they were punny graves they yeah. were they had puns on them oh yeah, that's good I, I didn't, didn't see all that. I only saw the one but they were all the I by seeing only one I'm like oh they're gonna be all the punny graves oh, from yeah, yeah. the line the ride line been itching for cinematic doctrine merch check out the support tiers on patreon We're offering merch to those who support at select tiers. So head on over to patreon.com forward slash cinematic doctrine and share your support. There's a link in the show notes too. Um, Travis finds out what they uh, presume to be as his hat and head and it is, um, but he leaves the hat. I'm sorry. He leaves the head. head. He only takes the hat. I thought he actually needed both. And I thought there'd be a point about that, but I thought he was going to take both. Yeah. I I felt like there was going to be something about that, but then they didn't. He just takes the hat. Uh, Just so everyone listening knows, I only have, I would say a a full page left. That's about it. So we are very much (laughs) at the end. Yes. Um, They return to the mansion. We're ending. We're going to start heading into this third act. Um, Crump's murders happened in the full, at full moons, or they say that like they have full power at full, full moon. Mm-hmm. It is a full moon this night. So the stakes are supposed to be theoretically very high. Travis stays in the car. Um, ben and Kent head inside and Kent shares that he's a charlatan, that he works at a costume store, that he puts on this priest costume to swindle people out of money, um, to do like odd jobs and make people feel better. Uh, um, that I, I had no other point to that. I just put the note in because the movie clearly has no other point to that. <laughs> I mean, you could see it coming from a mile away. Still a great character. I'm, but... I'm going to be honest, bro. I didn't see it, but really? I didn't care enough to I mean, know. <laughs> at the very beginning, I'm like, he's not going to be a real priest. Uh, my first thought was like, is he going to be some sort of ghost that like is able to do a little bit more than everybody mm-hmm. else? But that could be cool. I was not surprised when he's like, I'm not a real like priest. Like he was the ghost that followed him home if he had kind actually of, gone yeah, to it first. Yeah, or, or like, I don't know. I don't something know. something I smart <laughs> yeah and then it doesn't do that like, um he's Bruce, obviously not a priest there might be a narrative reason in the script that says why this is important but it didn't seem to come clear to me that that was the case but anyways bruce is totally possessed he's acting weird quote unquote but he says all the ghosts are gone and he says henrietta Her- harriet and gabby are are missing no he, i'm sorry uh, he doesn't say that. He just says all the ghosts are gone, but also Harriet and Gabby are missing, and he's acting weird. So we're like, oh, he's possessed. Uh, ben looks for Gabby and Harriet, leaving Kent with Bruce, and then Bruce very clearly reveals that he is definitely crumb. Yeah. Anyways, we're at the final act. Uh, there, there's not a lot of notes here. I have two points from the film, and then two notes that I wrote. No, I'm sorry, three points from the film, and two notes, because it'll be very quickly over. Mm-hmm. Crump manifests. Uh, Bruce is not dead. He's alive. Travis has been uh, tricked just like Gracie. So Gracie had been tricked by Crump to kill himself because Gracie Was so desperately to wanted to see. Yeah. Well, yeah, Gracie so desperately wanted to see his wife that Crump said, yes, deluded him into thinking he was his wife. Like because for some him. reason, when Gracie can get these people to die from grief in particular, he gets more power for some reason yeah i'm kind of bummed they didn't explain that a little bit more. yeah like the, some sort of like a sense of power in which grief is like it, it it's just not there it's not, it's not there. but it actually and like because since not to knock you but no, you ahead. lost over it the reason he was killing like crump was killing people when he was alive was because it was supposedly part of like a black magic ring or whatever and it was like blood sacrifices to give him power and money yeah and like revenge and revenge which is totally yeah because like his dad kicked him out and then like everyone was like ha 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 and he's like well now i'm rich i can kill all of you basically so i think that's what he was still trying to do in death which was like sacrifice the thousand people to get power but what did grief but, yeah, have to clear. do with it? Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. Yeah, Crump ends up manifesting. Yeah, so then Travis, of course, like I was getting into, he's tricked just like Gracie. It turns out Travis's dad is dead, uh, which I kind of assumed. But then the- I see, I was kind of surprised by that. I I figured it out when he's like, I'm going to talk to my dad, and he pulls like a notebook out in the car, and I'm like, oh, his dad is dead. Like that, I didn't pick up on. I'm like. 
oh, he's just like divorced or something. And he's like separated yeah. over there. So I thought that was a good hook. Yeah. I, it then, of course, turns out that the person he's been talking to isn't his dad. But great. It turns out Crump has had sort of like an ace up his sleeve, which is that if he couldn't get Ben, because he had actually been pursuing Ben to be the mm-hmm. one he gets. Because of the grief of losing his wife. And it's probably just a matter of people who are grieving are more susceptible to mm-hmm. like which death. Which I guess I okay. get. But like You are fine. more vulnerable when you it's are a little, very sad. It's a little edgy. Like oddly <laughs> enough, the movie feels kind of irresponsible with some of that stuff. But that's yeah. fine. There's plenty of movies that I've I've watched that like are irresponsible some that I don't know. Sort of mind. subtext going on there. I think I just if it's gonna be irresponsible, I want it to at least be better. <laughs> that's so, fair. That's like totally smile yeah. is fine and deeply irresponsible but it's at least kind of a fun movie but um or at at least it's a important movie to me i would say in a weird way but anyways travis um because of that they realize they have to go stop travis so then ben pursues them to do that um for me i wrote a note that says there is no threat everything is so intangible that's mostly me commenting on just the way the movie looks mandalorian uh when the first season came out they and i've mentioned this pretty frequently because it's disney uh, when Mandalorian's first season came out, they had created a dome to basically it's a it's a screen dome with all these screens on it. And it showcases the digital world that otherwise the Mandalorian would be in. And the reason they did this is because since the Mando suit is reflective, they want to be able to reflect the proper colors of the world around him and lighting of the world around him. It's very smart. It's similar to mm-hmm. what they did for a gravity, uh, Alfonso Cuaron's gravity. Um one of the big celebrations of that film is how do they make them in the suits look so accurate to like the lighting in space? Mm-hmm. Well, they set up an entire box dome of LED lights that changed colors based on what this digital world was that mm-hmm. they made. And they put the actor in a gyroscope suit so that when the actor is flying through space, spinning around, their suit is matching up with the light. It, yeah. It's brilliant, brilliant technology. Let's celebrate yeah. that. That's good. But if you lean on it when you don't need it, it can be a detractor. Like and in this they're case, taking the big shiny thing and just slapping it on everything when everything doesn't actually need it. Yeah, like the it's the haunted mansion, man. Make it a real house. Yeah, <laughs> like like houses in Practical phasmophobia effect. feel more real than this. <laughs> right. Practical <laughs> effects in a haunted house are like synonymous with each other. It just feels and good, like, especially when it's it. the ride. Like part yeah. of what makes the ride so amazing is it's you're 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 using the power of physics to create optical illusions that are really wonderful and that's one of the joys i find in movies it's kind mm-hmm. of why i like men- when i mentioned saw x it's like it's all practical effects so it just makes it feel more visceral Ugh. and in that way it kind of makes it just more fun yes. to be in a packed theater where people are like oh my god oh my they're gosh. cutting off their leg again <laughs> it's just terrible and like nope. that to me becomes exciting and <laughs> in this it's like everything's digital there's like they keep going to this one hallway and at the whole time they're in the hallway it even kind of looks like the actors feel a little lost because i'm like i don't which i just don't know if the, the actors but like know what to do because yeah. it's like i know they're actors right you're the the literal title is you are performing a fake action yeah but i just feel sorry like i feel i i so it just this is the climactic scene where it looks like ghostbusters 2016 and uh which is a movie that i actually kind of think is fun it's pretty it's funny at times it remembers ghostbusters is supposed to be funny is that um, the one with all the women that's the one with the women. Okay, I've um, not seen that one. It is absolutely worth watching now that we are so far away from the disaster that was the internet <laughs> at the time. Uh, but the third act have... is just terrible because uh, it's just <laughs> boring. Oh, no. um, which there's a lot of comparisons in terms of visual profile between the two. The ghosts look almost the exact same. Interesting. Um, but this entire action sequence, each character kind of has to complete a different task to then cause the final seance to take place in which they can... Not seance, just this ritual to, to lock to away banish. corrupt. Um, yeah. And so they save Travis from uh, becoming the new sacrifice. Um, ben is tempted, but then he doesn't do it. Um, and through the power of Leota and Harriet, they together bring uh, they together defeat everybody defeats Crump in, in yes. some different ways. Um, my final note is literally just movie is so ugly. It's like if you <laughs> called if, it's like if you caked on makeup. All of the stuff you're using might be good, but you're using too much and it's poorly applied. Okay. Um, that is my that. final note of the film. <laughs> That's fair. Um, the resolution of the film is now like, you know, Crump has been put away um, and uh, everyone's 
friends. They all have a dinner party. There's a dance sequence with some ghosts. They basically do the dance scene from yeah. the dinner party, um, which they previously have referenced at least once. And I think at this point they referenced three times in the movie, which is one of the most memorable, if not the most memorable part yeah. of the. Well, now they're all um, happy haunts at the end. Yes. Like, we and now they're all have having a good that. time. <laughs> And um, Gabby and Travis stay in the house. They don't sell it. Yeah. And the ghosts stay too. They don't actually want yeah, to leave. Yeah, they don't pass on. So. Which is, I thought it was yeah. kind of strange. Like, what was the point? But at the same time, I'm like, oh, well, now we have like the ride. We have the reason why there are a bunch of happy haunts here. Like, okay, I can accept that. But it still seems like what really was the point. Well, oh, let's let's ghosts. let's go into the end. I mean, it's that's the end of the movie. There's no post credit scene. Let's do. Is it a party please or party please there and why? No like what a post credit scene. Like yeah, the, the 2003 one does have one, and it's like a it's I more of even, a I silly forgot. cute I thing. Watch it. It's I just didn't. a cute thing. It's it's more of the little like teaser as opposed yeah. to like um, a post credits like Marvel. But yeah, yeah party please or party pooper um, for any reason. Yeah. Uh, what what do you where do you land on it? It sounded well, like you were kind of getting into some I thoughts, think... but. I think anyone listening probably knows. I'm going to say it's party pleaser because I definitely had a lot of fun watching it. I will say after discussing it with you, I see where you're coming from and I don't Mm -hmm. disagree. I think it is a little clunky. If I watched it again, I'd probably pick up on some of the stuff you're saying about how it looks. But I just like for me, like I just love Disney. I will I, I will say I won't necessarily like go to bat for some things. Like I think there are different some of their live action things just shouldn't exist. Um uh, yeah. like Beauty and the Beast doesn't need to exist. Mulan doesn't need to exist. Aladdin was okay. Cinderella has been the best so far. There's some controversies coming up about the Snow White that they're gonna be doing. Um Little Mermaid was okay. So, but I just get like all the nostalgia feeling, all the fun stuff when it comes to Disney. Disney is just a feel good thing for me. And I feel like that's what this was, was just a really fun, feel good. I laughed a bunch, although it doesn't take much to make me laugh. It doesn't take much to make me cry. I'm a very emotional person. And I think this hit the mark for that. I think this would be really fun to watch with a group of people. Um, I would definitely watch it again. Uh, That, yeah, I... I really liked it. I thought it was great. I recommend it definitely. Yeah, and and similar to what how you started it, it's pretty clear to see where I'm at. I I think this is party pooper. I did not enjoy this. I think the movie's uh, oddly it, it is grotesquely transfixing. Like I I I couldn't stop looking at it, but when I would look at it, I would I would not like what I was looking at. And I kind of would just learn what it was that i didn't like but it it kind of feels weird to describe it because i feel like it takes a lot to kind of understand why because um just i i opened up imdb and rotten tomatoes and the audience score on rotten tomatoes 84 percent. that's very high twenty five thousand plus um 2500 plus and then even on imdb the rating score is 6.1 out of 10 that's out of twenty one thousand reviews um so people like the movie they don't dislike it um at all and uh so like even the there's the photo that was going around online that i mentioned of the three types of uh, th- the the three movies the mm-hmm. the three uh haunted mansions and this one was rated low and it said it had the lowest audience score and i'm like i i that was clearly outdated because it's clear people like this one mm-hmm. um but even some people on letterbox that i really appreciate reading from didn't like the movie specifically because they just felt like it by being so evocative of the ride at some point you're like i just want to ride the ride but i get like i agree i get that like going to disney's more expensive now than it's literally (laughs) ever been ever and so like you could just watch the movie but it's like but it's we're now talking about like a totally different medium of of engagement that like part of why the ride is so magical is it's made by people who are specifically brilliantly talented at making rides and so translating that information into a film is just weird now now for the film i just like i didn't find it funny i didn't find it interesting i found it weird it's commentary and discussion and exploration of grief feels ham-fisted and just like 
it it's I remember like Dan mentioned kind of like a joke about like every Marvel property after Endgame was just about grief. And it feels like a lot of Disney stuff is oddly about grief. And then one of the most yeah. crazy um criticisms I've read on Letterboxd about this from a, a fairly popular reviewer who who really likes actually the 2003 one. Um he was just like he just was like, give me a break. Like he thought this one was like unbelievably just he he actually said it was ugly too i didn't remember that so i wasn't pulling from that um but he just felt like it just felt like a movie that just wasn't he also called it embarrassing i can't believe it i i (laughs) I swear i didn't reread this beforehand because i try to avoid reviews whenever we're about to do an episode because i want to keep fresh yeah but yeah it's just it's a really weird it's just a weird movie. I'll, I'll actually have a link to it if anyone's curious. It's um, Silent Dawn's review for Haunted Mansion. It's a, it's one of the top three for the, the thing, but on Letterbox. But yeah, I just I was not about this. I would not want to put this on with friends. I like I said, I, I think the other one's fun to talk about and talk with, and it has that weird stuff that makes it kind of fun. This didn't have <laughs> anything weird that was fun <laughs> to me. Like I just like. <laughs> ghost cuckoldry stupid like that is so <laughs> weird and so that like to strange. me that's so funny <laughs> like that to me is like that's like there's something there's something magical about weird as a criticism and i remember saying to Catherine while watching this i was like i know i know i know i keep using the word weird to criticize movies but there's so many different kind of weird movies um and this one's just on the negative so yeah mm. party pooper for me 100 percent was not totally fair not about it you may not know this, but the easiest way you can show your support for Cinematic Doctrine is to rate and review the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen. So press pause and share your thoughts. We'd love to hear what you have to say. And then press play again so you can hear the rest of the show. As we wrap up, recommendations. What do you got for recommendation? I figure you first, then me, then you again, because you said you had, you had two. I feel weird, but it's not a Halloween recommendation. It's uh, Wheel of Time on Amazon Prime. Um, I'm not reading the books. My husband is. And I think most people can agree with Ro- that Robert Jordan is uh, very wordy. And some of his books, as you go through this, the Wheel of Time series, which is like 13 to 16 books long, a little tough to get through. Um, it picks up, but it's weird. However, the TV show, as someone who's coming from it, not having read the books and no, and I know nothing about the books except what Thomas tells me is, is like, this is what the books is. This is what the, the TV show is. I love it. The second season just came out and it just ended. And holy moly, so good. Holy and like, it ex- right. <laughs> it <laughs> explores magic, um, which only women use. And if a man uses it, it's like bad. Um, but it explores basically a chosen one trope but this chosen one will either destroy the world in apocalyptic nature or he will be the savior of the world and no one knows exactly what it's going to be and this person and, and it is a man who can use magic and that's like this is what we don't want but he's like super powerful and he's going to go throughout like his life struggling with becoming evil or becoming good and i just love that idea like and the way they're doing it in the in the show is very interesting because like most of the time a chosen one is like usually always good and like there's no struggle there's no issue it's always going to be good he's always going to be on the side of good and yet this guy we don't know he might be like evil incarnate or he could be savior of all um the acting is great the costuming is amazing everything love it i can't get enough of it and i really want to especially season two so wheel of time amazon prime go watch it i think the one i'm gonna go with because i i've been having a lull of watching movies i've been so busy lately but i did watch one last week that i thought was pretty good it's called totally killer it is on Amazon Prime. It is a slasher movie in the vein of, let's say, Happy Death Day, where it takes like a slasher premise but gives it a sci fi thing. Now, it doesn't go as crazy as Happy Death Day 2, which is like not even a slasher movie. It's just a science fiction, how do we get home movie, <laughs> which 
I didn't like at the time, but I feel like I need to go rewatch it because I I think I would enjoy it more. Really, like if you're interested in weird movies, Happy Death Day one is very fun. I'm not recom- I'm not going to put it in the recommendations, but I'll I guess I'm soft recommending it now. The Happy Death Day one is very fun, palatable, accessible, and then Happy Death Day two is just a science fiction movie, so it's <laughs> it's pretty cool. But um, and the premise for that is uh, a girl, she gets killed by a slasher killer, but she wakes up on the same day that she got killed by the slasher killer. And so she has to figure out how to not die by the slasher killer. Um, the funniest part of the movie is when she realizes if she messes up her plan, she can kill herself and she'll just wake up on the same day. So there's like this part where she like, there's a boy she doesn't like. So she jumps off a roof in front of him. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so good. Oh, That's that movie's great. great. I, it's on my shelf. I gotta watch it again. Um, but but the one I'm recommending, Totally Killer, is in the same vein because basically a character, her mother, who was friends with three girls who got killed 30 years prior, um, who was killed by a killer that had uh, rampaged through the town and never was found, her mother is killed by that killer. And she then learns that her friend is making a time machine. And when that killer chases her down gets stuck in the time machine when the killer stabs a knife into the machine, turns it on, and she gets transported back to the day, to the week that her friends, her mother's friends will get killed. So now she's in the past realizing to save my mother's life, I need to stop the killer now. Um, It is, (laughs) if that explanation is ridiculous, it's because the movie's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, you had me at time machine. (laughs) It's very fun. And and it's it's got good... um, it's got the good slasher violence of like it's tense and like you feel it and it has like I've I've joked about it on the podcast. There's nothing like a good stabbing. It's like really great in the in that sense of like visceral like excitement. You'll have your toes curl, but it's great because the mother whose friends were killed by this killer. When the killer shows up, she goes, "I'm ready for you. I've been waiting for you to show up." So she's like <laughs> fighting back. It's so great. Um, <laughs> Kieran and Shipka is the lead. She's great. She's in my one of my favorite movies. Uh, top four uh, black coat's daughter we have an episode on that you can go back into that uh, much more slow slow burning slasher movie very very weird but um karen and Shipka is really great and it, the movie's extremely funny um because it plays up the fact that she's a gen z millennial going back to the 80s and the 80s are like an awful time for like for everything so yeah it's it's really great um check it out totally killer it's on amazon prime you can have a blast Well, thanks so much for coming on this episode, Cheryl. You're welcome. And I just want to add, I wish people could see, but my silly recommendation, go get yourself a black cat. Go adopt a kitten. Yeah, that's a good recommendation. Like, okay. They're cute. I have a black cat. He is my spirit cat. He is like, when he dies, I'm going to like... Go into I said this for to the Catherine. Rest of my I'm life. like, if Milo dies, I don't, I don't know, know what, what I'm gonna, gonna do. do. I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> and he's on my lap right now, and he, like, he, he's a he really is cute my cat. cat. Like, he follows me around. We do this thing in the morning where he rubs on my face to say good morning. How dare you leave me for seven hours straight while you sleep and I'm by myself? But seriously, black cats, and I know Tabby's too, but I'm biased. Black cats have such a cute little personality that, like, you will never be bored. And there, I. I haven't looked up statistics, but there is a stigma of like black cats being unlucky and not being the ones that are adopted because they're unlucky or like there have been that's stories the, of that's like the people pervasive who... thing. I don't yeah. I've never I've also wondered if it's true or not, I, too. But yeah. it, the fact that it's a saying does make it feel like, mm, yeah, that's upsetting. I think but and like, again, another normal. one that like, cats. I don't know if the, if this has like any validity to it, but people will like purposely like adopt them to like unalive them <laughs> and it's like uh, yeah. i don't that's, know if that's, I that's real that's true, but, i hope yeah. not because they are precious but honestly go go adopt but if a you believe black that kitten and if like, you believe that it means uh, when you buy one you've saved it yeah that's what i mean that's like more valuable. go save a black cat <laughs> and like october <laughs> is like is their season but then you will have a spooky decoration for the rest of its precious life and like yeah. they lay funny they purr funny they run around the house funny there's just something weird about a black cat that i don't think any other cats do and you will thank me as long as you're not allergic go adopt a black cat thanks so much for checking out this episode of cinematic doctrine if you enjoyed this episode consider leaving a review and subscribing to the podcast and as mentioned before cinematic doctrine has a patreon 
for as little as three dollars a month you're opted into a once a month movie poll where you decide a movie we discuss on the podcast there are other unique benefits that come with supporting the podcast so be sure to check that out at patreon.com forward slash cinematic doctrine a special shout out to those who support at the Art House Theater tier on Patreon. Thank you so much, Mom, Dad, Melanie, Sherlyon, and Thomas. You guys are the best, and your continued monetary support is greatly appreciated. Until next time, stay cool. Want some Cinematic Doctrine swag? You're in luck. We've got 3-inch Cinematic Doctrine logo stickers exclusive for Patreon supporters. Perfect for your travel mug or laptop. Head over to patreon.com forward slash cinematic doctrine, link in the show notes, and choose the independent theater tier. Doing so will net you other perks too. But let's be real, the podcast stickers are the coolest perk. So get yourself some podcast stickers by supporting on Patreon.